Okay, so this is going to be a little follow-up video to my uh, last video. I was going to make this video anyways, but, um, you know, considering a lot of the, um, let's just say, happenings and events that have recently occurred in uh, the Genshin Impact community, I feel like a follow-up video was necessary, not only because, um, you know, there's going to be a little message at the end, so stick around for that, uh, but also uh, just to express the rest of my opinions, because... Again, in my last video, I feel like a lot of me uh, people misunderstood what the point of the video was. I was just pointing out the fact that the game was basically fence-sitting and uh, could not decide of um, like if I wanted to be hardcore or casual. But we're going to touch on that as well a little bit by the end of this all. Uh, but uh, for now, I um, this whole video, the, the point of this one is... Um, I'm going to be discussing my own personal problems with the game. You know, things like th that I specifically do not enjoy, right? Like my personal, like I guess you could say biased things or, you know, subjective things. But uh, I'll try to argue for why they might not be subjective. But, um, you know, let's just get into it. But before we do, I really want to say thank you so much for the support on the last video. You know, thanks for coming out. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for doing all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. You know, there were some really, really bad disrespectful people, obviously. I still responded to them, talked to them. Uh, there were some really great people. Thank you all. Thank you for supporting me. And uh, yeah, let's get into this one. And uh, this is going to be, um, I guess you could say, split into sections. And like, one more thing is that I want to be more concise this time because uh, some people pointed out that I was like blabbering way too much and like wasn't getting to the point. So I'm going to try and be very quick and to the point this time and uh i think i have like three or four sections i'm not really quite sure yet because i'm uh, like recording this live so uh let's just get into it the first thing that i definitely want to talk about is okay first of all i have to preface this section by saying that i've only beat the story up until inazuma however i heard that most of these problems are still present in at least sumeru and, you know, if you want to say that my opinion of the story is invalid just because I haven't beaten it all, you know, sure, go ahead, I disagree with you, I'll say why at the end of the segment, but I still feel like my opinion holds a lot of ground because, well, again, it's most of the story, and uh, one of the biggest problems that it has is just the unreal dialogue bloat, which is mostly caused by Paimon and how she likes to regurgitate already said information and it's just like extremely annoying which also kind of causes the game to sometimes have like very childish writing and also things really tend to drag out in terms of like the story events because you constantly go to places or see people that don't really matter and only serve to like prolong the events that are happening in the story which kind of makes you feel like nothing ever has any stakes also a lot of boring as NPCs tend to like take places of prevalent actually like characters with like real designs which kind of belittles the actual characters of the game and leaves them like no space to get any character development and also another thing is that outside of limited events it very rarely feels like the characters like the actual characters have any meaningful connections between each other and they only like tend to talk to like other NPCs that don't have like unique designs or like the traveler. Which a lot of the time makes the characters feel almost like one dimensional and that, that they're just like a collection of uh, or quirky character traits. And you know it's a real shame because in my opinion, like in my personal opinion, I feel like character development and just characters in general like are the lifeblood of a story, right? Like, you cannot have a good story without good characters. But the thing is, I feel like even the story itself is not really good. Like, the, the whole point of the story is uh, for us to find our missing sibling, but it never feels like we get any, like, tangibly close to achieving our goal, and we're just, like, going around the world and, like, meeting random people and, like, doing nothing, essentially. Because whenever we get to the end of a region, they always basically tell us, oh, whoops, sorry, uh, he was just here, or she was just here, depending on who you picked. And, uh, you know, they're off, so uh, we can't do anything, sorry. And, like, at a lot of points in the story, it doesn't really 
feel like we go there because the story needs us to go there, but rather we go there because we just want to promote the new character, right? Or like just something, anything new, like a, like a new place to explore. And also, I already know what some people might say in response to everything that I'm saying. And uh, I'll say this. I think that lore is not a substitute for anything at all. Because in my eyes, for like any lore or any like you know, like, extra backstory that you might find in books or something, it only matters if the main story is able to, like, engage you in its, you know, in its, in its content. But, you know, sure, if you still enjoy the lore, if you think that, like, it's a good enough thing on its own and you just want to, you know, delve into that, I'm not going to stop you, but just in my opinion, I think that it's no, you know, again, it's no substitute for any actual character development, any actual interesting story beats to happen in the main story. And you know, my favorite example of all of this is uh, Raiden Shogun, like of all the problems that I mentioned before this. Now, uh, b before I say anything, you gotta understand one thing, and it's that uh, A is one of my favorite characters in Genshin, which, uh, you know, unfortunately is not a very high bar to clear, uh, but at least they tried something with her, right? However, uh, unfortunately, she still suffers uh, heavily from the flaws that I mentioned above, like, you know, the story dragging a lot, like her, her own story, like the main story and uh, her own character quest. Uh, they always talk about how much bad shit she went through, but that they never show it, which ma makes it, like, not as engaging. Or, you know, she doesn't, like, it doesn't feel like she has a connection to anyone and she always only talks to either, like, the Traveler or some random NPCs. So it's just like really unfortunate, you know, like people say that the game's story makes it all like worthwhile. But you know, as I probably hopefully already demonstrated, like for me personally, it just feels like a chore most of the time, which which is why I really want them to add a skip button. Because, you know, uh, say what you will about Fontaine and how maybe, you know, like the region story might actually be good this time. Because, uh, yeah, I also genuinely heard that you know, they lessen some of the problems that I mentioned in here. Like, you know, Paimon doesn't yap as much. Uh, but, like, at the end of the day, I'm not gonna go through hundreds of hours of boring snooze fest story just to get to something that might be, like, marginally better. And, you know, speaking of things that I wish were better... Now, originally, I was going to complain and drag this section out a lot in the original concept of the video. But uh, actually, you guys in the comments on the previous video helped me realize one very, very, very important thing about the combat in this game. And it's the fact that it doesn't matter whatsoever. Why does it not matter? Because uh, the elemental reaction system is uh, completely overpowered and uh, makes the game a joke. So essentially what happens is, um, you know... You cause a bunch of elemental reactions and uh, everything in the game either blows up instantly so there is not even a possibility of you having uh, any sort of a challenge uh, or you know they just uh, introduce some sort of new enemy that has uh, shit tons of super armor and uh, cannot be juggled cannot be done anything with and uh, they have like some uh, bullshit attacks that you know like I don't want to hit you let's say hit you no matter what but it kind of feels like it sometimes. Like, they just power through absolutely everything you throw at them, and uh, it just comes down to either you kill them first, or they kill you in one shot. And, you know, the thing that doesn't help this case whatsoever, like the combat in, the, in our case, is um, the fact that it almost feels like a flowchart in a way. Like, one of the most core components to having a good combat system is uh, two things, right? It's player choice and enemy design. And in my opinion, in my personal opinion, I think that the player choice part doesn't really matter. Like the only thing that matters in combat is uh, the team that you bring in. So essentially, building the right team is the only thing that you really have any control over. Because once you start fighting, it's essentially the same thing over and over again. Like people even have a term like like rotation, having a rotation, right? So like you do the same thing over and over and over again until the enemy just dies. And again, the other component of uh, combat is uh, having good enemy design, but again, the enemies in this game either blow up in one hit, or they're just so incredibly 
unbelievably bullshit that they just like power through all of your attacks and like it's just a war of attrition of uh, who kills who first. Oh, and uh, also I completely forgot to mention this in the original recording of the video, but the general movement, dodging, and also basic attack strings feel absolutely pointless and sluggish to use. Now, you might have just listened to everything I just said, and uh, you really want to curse me out or something and say how wrong I am, but please, I actually think that's a good thing, and I'll explain why at the end of the video, but just please, I beg you, just hear out my point, hear out my conclusion at the end to understand my full point, okay? But I'll just say that for what I have in mind for Genshin Impact's future, like what I would like to see, it's actually a good thing, so just hear me out, hear me out. But uh, before we get to the end, you know, uh, we got to get through uh, the last couple of sections, which is... It sucks. Okay, okay, it's a little bit more complicated than that. It's still not really a super long list of uh, complaints for this part, but I just want to say that the general movement is way too slow, you run out of stamina very quickly, the general map design is way too vertical, you know, like you have to climb giant mountains and you can like fall off constantly and it's just annoying to traverse the world. So the one thing, just the one thing that I want them to do is to add more teleportation points on top of mountains. That is the only thing I'm asking for, please. Oh, and um, also, could you increase the gliding speed, please? Thank you. But you know, also, I feel completely unincentivized sometimes to explore the world because a lot of it looks either really generic and boring, or it's a cool place that is like nice to visit once and then never again. And on a side note, a really annoying thing that happens in this game is that there's certain quests that remove cool environmental like hazards and effects, which is most apparent in Inazuma for example, how like you can remove the raining island. And I just don't understand why you would do that because it makes the world feel more, more interesting. But, eh, you know, sure, whatever. Like at this point, it would be so much work to remake all the regions and like there would be no point to it. So, you know, exploration is exploration. I suppose they can only just improve from this point on. But I personally feel like, you know, it's not really that great. And also another side note is that I find it really weird and dumb how certain rooms or just certain places are locked behind quest lines, like side quests, but then the quest is positioned on one end of the map and it unlocks like a room on a complete opposite end of the map. And I know I might be like over exaggerating a little bit here, but it's just like a real thing and it just annoys me. But yeah, I suppose besides that, there's not really that much to complain about in exploration. I just hope that they make it better in the future. This last section is going to be mostly a lightning round of uh, some of the complaints that I have that don't deserve their own section necessarily, but problems that are still pretty prevalent for the game, and I want to talk about them. They're not really in any particular order, but I'm just going to list them off one after another so you know don't get a little bit confused if uh, you know you hear me talk about one thing and then immediately switch to something else, but you know let's just get to it. So the first one right off the bat that I cannot even believe they released the game in the state and you know it's still not in the game, it's the lock-on feature. It's a combat game, why is there no lock-on? That would be a really useful feature and so that you know when you're not locking onto something you could just like shoot in the direction that you want to shoot in or like hit the direction that you want to hit in because sometimes for certain missions you know like you want to break barricades or whatever but you lock onto enemies instead and it's like really annoying. Next point is you know, it's good that they start spawning you right in front of the domain nowadays, but why do I still have to walk up to the tree to claim my rewards? Like, it's absolutely pointless, only takes up time, and like, it's not necessary, just give me my rewards and let me get out. Next point is, why can I not manually respawn bosses? Because sometimes I just want to fight one single boss for their ascension materials, but I just can't and I have to wait for like, 5 minutes or however long it takes so for the boss to respawn, it's just like, pointless wasted time. Next point is co-op being way too limiting. For those of you who have played the game for a while, you probably already know what I'm talking about. It's just stuff like some side quests not being able to be completed or, you know, inaccessible interactables or all the world level bullshit. Like, it's just annoying. 
Another thing that really annoys me is the fact that I can't switch my Traveler's like element on the fly. Why do I have to go to a Statue of the Seven just to switch the element and then have to go all the way back potentially to like solve a puzzle or something? And speaking of switching things out, why is there still no artifact loadout system? That's pretty, pretty freaking important. I imagine a lot of people would really want to have like different builds for the same character, but I guess, uh, you know, you only can only have one thing and then you have to remember every single artifact that you have in your inventory, but you know, that's whatever. Sure, I guess we can have basic conveniences. And also, why can't I claim my commission rewards, like daily commission rewards from anywhere? That's another annoying thing that can just like be removed. And you can also add cooking to that. I also don't see like why you have to be near a campfire to cook something. I know that the pot exists, but I wish I could just go into my menu and just cook something. And kind of the last point is, why can't the summon history refresh like instantly? Because sometimes I want to see how far away I am from like a four star pity or something and I just want to get like a character or a weapon and I just can't have to wait for like half an hour for it to refresh and it's just annoying as well. All right, we're done with those. But there's just one more thing I want to talk about in this miscellaneous section that is, uh, it's still not too big to the point where it deserves its own section to talk about. So I'd rather just talk about it here. And uh, that is just general animation and modeling across the board throughout the game. So what do I mean by that? Well, obviously animation is self-explanatory, but modeling is, um, well, just character models in general, right? So the points that I have for this section are basically that there's no unique walking or running animation for each character. And I know that there's unique animations between different types of characters. So for example, like an adult male runs differently from like just a child character, right? But there's no unique uh, like running animations between different characters specifically. And I think for a multi-billion dollar company to not have unique animations for every character that they're trying to sell is kind of embarrassing. And you know, it's not just that, it's, just, it's not just running or, you know, walking or whatever. It's also the fact that some characters just straight up share like attacking animations, like basic attack strings, which is also like really weird. I know that it mostly affects like four stars, but even some five stars like share the same like charge attacks or like plunge attacks or whatever else, right? And I, again, you know, for a multi-billion dollar company, I am pretty sure they could do better than this. You know, there's also a problem of there not being too many idle animations, for example, as well. So you can like end up hearing the same voice lines over and over again, which they're even like memed. That's like how bad it is. And lastly, in regards to modeling, because I've been mostly talking about animations up to this point, but with character modeling, it's absolutely also unforgivable because they're a multi-billion dollar company. And I cannot believe anyone absolutely anyone if they told me that they cannot afford to make new models for new characters because sometimes for them being lazy and just reusing old models for new characters can literally be detrimental to some characters like for example for ito right they advertise them as this like big oni man with uh, like you know muscular body and whatever but at the end of the day when you get him in the game and uh, you play as him and you look at his model it's just like it's the same exact old adult male body, just with like muscles drawn on it. And I think that's absolutely embarrassing. So yeah, please invest more money into your animations and models. You know, don't be a cheapskate or whatever. Give the characters what they deserve. But um, as for this whole section, it's finally over. So, you know, let me just get to the conclusion of this video. All right. At this point, you might be asking yourself a pretty reasonable question, and that is, Nick, why do you care so much? Why do you complain so much? Why do you have all these videos, you know, talking about Genshin Impact? Like you said that you don't even play the game, so why do you make these videos? Why do you talk about Genshin? Why do you criticize it? And, um, you know, I've heard people say, just quit the game, or you don't play it, so it shouldn't matter to you. But you've got to realize one very important thing, and it's that for better or for worse, Genshin Impact has kind of changed the entirety of the gacha industry as a whole. It kind of set like a new bar for uh, like in terms of uh, visuals, in terms of what kind of gameplay we could see, or like the size of the world. And uh, a lot of other companies and uh, a lot of other people, right, look up to the game and uh, hold it as like the, the gold standard for the genre. 
but again, it's not a genre, but whatever, that's besides the point. So, they hold this game in very high regard. So, this is, like, gonna be the game that is, uh, like, every other game is gonna be modeled off of, right? Since it's, like, the most successful game in the world, basically, because it's making so much money, right? So, it would literally only benefit, like, everyone if uh, Genshin Impact became better. And, you know, I personally really saw an opportunity with the entire, like, 4.4 update, right? Uh, essentially to finally for the people to voice their criticism and talk about the game in a healthy way to express um, you know what we want to be better what we want to change what direction we want the game to go in but unfortunately with all the fighting and all the drama that's currently going on between like you know Tectone, Natsu, whatever, whoever else, Mtash, Braxophone you know pretty pretty justified I'm not saying those don't matter like all that drama doesn't matter but I feel like, at the end of the day, we're really squandering an opportunity to help this game that a lot of people, like, really love, right? To get better. And again, right? Like, not just be better for the sake of Genshin Impact, but for, like, the sake of everyone. Since it has so much influence. But, uh, again, you know, just to reiterate a little previous point that I just had is, uh... I know there's a lot of drama in the creator community going on right now and I know it's really serious and I'm not trying to dismiss it but I'm just saying that at the same time we shouldn't forget about you know our drive to get the game to be better so let's just let's just keep that clear but yeah basically both of these videos have essentially been for the sake of voicing my own concerns you know shouting into the void so to speak <laughs> since Hoyaverse doesn't really listen to anyone else but you know, I'm also glad that people enjoy my opinion and the way that I present information. I'm glad that I've started so much discussion in my last video. And, uh, you know, I've met some really nice people and uh, I really hope that we get to continue this discussion. And honestly, I hope that by the time that, you know, maybe I make the Genshin video next time, uh, I get to make a video where I talk about, you know, all the things that I love about Genshin, for example. <laughs> And as a matter of fact, you know what, if if the game actually ever changes, if they actually go through with like changing stuff and like making it better, I promise you, I promise you 100%, I'll make like an hour long video talking about everything I, I love about Genshin Impact, I swear. But unfortunately, I just have like a sneaking suspicion that that might not happen and that kind of makes me really sad. But at the same time, you know, like, I suppose what can be done about it, the only thing we can really do is do stuff like this. And also, just as one last little thing that I want to add on at the end of this, is um, I promised to talk about this in a lot of the responses that I made in my last video to some people. And uh, it's the fact that, you know, from uh, both of these videos, you might get an idea, perhaps, that I want Genshin Impact to be this, like, some hardcore, absolutely insane, uh, you know, combat-centric uh, game. But I honestly don't. As a matter of fact, I feel like it would be a lot more beneficial for the game to go more casual because of the type of audience that it has accumulated. And especially because of, um, you know, if you look back at all the points, all the problems that I've pointed out, I feel like it would be really, really hard for them to correct so many problems. And especially in some situations, even like go back to certain regions or certain characters and stuff and make them be you know like more interesting more deeper in terms of like you know again combat and stuff so i feel like if they just add more like casual aspects to the game like for example more stuff to do in the teapot or like more abilities to like place something in the teapot like more capacity right or some small stupid stuff like the ability to pet dogs or like a good photo mode or you know add teleportation points at the top of like mountains so that you don't have to climb them like like over and over and over again and yeah, I feel like if uh, that kind of thing happens, then uh, Genshin Impact would be really cozy. Especially, again, because uh, it has uh, it has a very unique opportunity in terms of the things that it can do because of the audience that it has gathered. Because, you know, like, I'm not trying to insult anyone by saying this, but there's a lot of casual people who play the game. So it would be a lot easier and a lot more beneficial to cater to them. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Especially considering that, like, actually other combat, for, like, centric games are coming out. So there's going to be, like, something for everyone, essentially. And I feel like Genshin could fill the niche of being, like, a casual, you know, like, relaxation game, right? 
And I still imagine that will probably piss a lot of people off. But I feel like uh, that's like the still the path of least resistance because uh, casual gamers are so much more prevalent, especially nowadays. But yeah, that was that. That was my thoughts on the matter. And, uh, you know, once again, I'm going to start wrapping this video up because it's been already way too long. I'm pretty sure it has been more than 20 minutes yet again. But, you know, sharing my thoughts, getting all of it out there. It's a pretty Herculean task, right? And I want to make sure to just like be as clear as possible. So, you know, at the end of the day, I uh, pass the torch to you guys yet again. And we'd just like to hear what you have to say yet again, because uh, last time I did this, last time I asked people to comment and share their thoughts, I had a lot of fun replying to people. And uh, as a side note, I probably missed a lot of things yet again in this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a pinned comment, please, if you made it this far. If uh, something ever comes up, if there's like an interesting uh, question in the comment section, I'm just going to, you know, edit my pinned comment and I'm going to add it to there. So if you want to ask me something, just check it there first if I already answered it so that I don't have to answer like the same question over and over again. Because it's probably going to be my last video specifically on this topic of like my problems with Genshin Impact, at least for a while. But yeah. Besides that, I hope you enjoyed this video yet again, and uh, thank you guys for watching, thank you for supporting. You know, I sincerely hope that maybe you go and check out my other stuff, and uh, you know, I want to be a gacha content creator myself, get into the space, get some more videos going, I want to play with Ring Waves, so maybe if you want to support that, stick around, you know, I would really appreciate it. But uh, yeah, besides that, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time, bye-bye.